Lesson 29, Introduction to Jesus. In today's lesson, we begin our study in the Gospel of Mark. Mark writes of Jesus as the servant of God, with emphasis on the good works of Jesus. In the first chapter, we move very rapidly into the works and ministry of Jesus, with no formal introduction to Jesus' birth or lineage. We shall learn how Jesus became very popular and busy in his work, and yet still took time to pray and serve the needs of others. The book begins by telling us about John, whom Isaiah and Malachi prophesied about as the forerunner of the coming Messiah. John's ministry was to prepare the way for the Lord to come to his people Israel by turning their hearts away from sin and back toward God. While many people came to John to be baptized, he kept pointing them towards someone mightier who would come after him. John was an important prophet and servant of the Lord whose ministry was marked by humility. He lived very simply with just the poorest of food and clothing and said he was not even worthy to untie the sandals of the coming Messiah. Jesus came to be baptized by John and then was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. This was the commencement of Jesus' earthly ministry and Israel's introduction to their Messiah. A voice came from heaven at Jesus' baptism and said, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God was commending Jesus as his righteous servant to minister to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus set about preaching the gospel of the kingdom around the regions of Galilee. He called Peter, Andrew, James and John to leave their fishing careers and to follow him. And they immediately obeyed and followed him. When Jesus went into the synagogue in Capernaum and taught with authority, the people were amazed at him, especially when they witnessed him cast out an unclean spirit from a man. This caused news of Jesus to spread out around the region rapidly. While in Peter's home, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, and then in the evening the whole town gathered outside the house, bringing to him all kinds of sick and demon-possessed people, and Jesus healed them. We do well to take notice that the people came to Jesus because they understood that he had the power to heal them and teach them God's word with authority. They were attracted to him because of the way he freely gave to them helping them with their needs. Today we find many who preach about God's giving, blessing, and helping, but how often do you find these preachers actually doing good, sharing, and helping the poor and needy? It is one thing to preach, but it is something else to do good and serve the needs of those who you preach at. Many preachers perhaps miss this important balance in their work for God, and become preoccupied with their preaching while neglecting to show personal interest in those they minister to. Someone has wisely said, they will not care how much you know until they know how much you care. The work of God is not just a matter of preaching sermons, but must also, and more importantly, involve the good deeds we do in service to others. After a very busy evening of ministering to the many needy people, Jesus woke very early the next morning and sought a solitary place to be alone with his Father. He spent those early hours praying. The disciples were out searching for him, and when they found him, they reported that the people were looking for him. Jesus said that they needed to go to the other villages also, for this was the purpose of his mission. We can learn another important spiritual lesson from this, namely that prayer is essential in conducting the work of God and at times is more important than tending to people who desire our attention. 
The servant of God needs quiet time alone to listen to the voice of God in prayer, to strengthen and guide him in his work. People will always demand more time from the preacher or the servant of God, and though it is important to minister to the needs of others, it can also infringe and hinder the needful and important spiritual exercise of prayer and the study of God's Word. Jesus was preaching in the synagogues throughout Galilee and casting out demons, showing himself to be very active and busy in his work. The work of God is a time-consuming occupation, for it seeks not only to bring people to the Lord, but also seeks to help minister to their many and varied needs. There are always plenty of people and plenty of needs, so the work is never finished. When Jesus healed a certain man with leprosy, he warned the man not to publish the news to others, but to go and offer a sacrifice as Moses prescribed. The man, however, went about telling others about how Jesus had healed him and this made it difficult for Jesus to be seen in public places. Jesus had to stay in deserted areas or the people would give him too much attention. Again, we see how Jesus differs from many who claim to be God's servants. Jesus does not seek the attention of the crowds, but chooses to do his work quietly without drawing attention. His ministry was to please God not win popularity with the people. A mark of Christian maturity and true spirituality is when you see a servant of God drawing attention away from himself and towards the Lord Jesus Christ, as was the case with John the Baptist. And so we read, And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. Mark chapter 1 verse 7.